We are recording. All right, welcome everybody. It is May 17th, Conservation Commission meeting. Uh, tonight we have Jerry Patria, Brian Pranka. We have Dave McWilliams and myself. Um, um, wait a minute, Chris, on the iPhone, is that Jen? I don't know. Yes, yes. Hi, Jen. Okay, Jen. We also have our coordinator, Dennis Clark, our secretary, Jean Nilsson, and we also have Norm Cheevers from Lake Management. Jean, who is it on the iPhone? I will Jen, she's there. a property owner of 102 um, Mort Vining. Jen, does she have a last name? Yeah. She's like Cher and Madonna. She just goes by Jen. That's it. <laughs> hey, you know what? That's great. I love it, actually. It's, no, what's it? Oh, I know Jen. Hi, Jen. How are you? Good. Yourself? Good, thanks. It's L A N G O N? G A N. L A N G A N. Lanyon. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's who it is. Gene, I thought you and I were, I thought you knew. Yeah, well, hey, you Jeez, know, Jean, uh, no. we met for three minutes. We, I know, we talked so many times on the phone. <laughs> hey, you're lucky I remember your first name. Yeah. <laughs> right on. All right. Okay, we're good. Uh -oh. All right, I cannot see the agenda. Would you like me to share my agenda with you? Uh, could you do that? I can't get my screen to move. Okay. <clears throat> that, is there anything, Dennis, that you'd like to uh, give us an update on? I think we could just go right to the minutes if you like. Okay. Why don't we do that? I did have a chance to look at them. I didn't see anything uh, outstanding. I, I did as well. And I thought they looked excellent. Two typos. Okay. I'm, I'm filling in for Brian tonight. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, under the NOI 157 Feeding Hills Road. Um, third sentence down. I think you mean meal service instead of mean service? No, I meant mean. Mean service? Okay. A lot of mean people out there. Yeah. And then, uh, on, uh, Hello. One, two, three. Oh. On the I'm at with us. Hi. Oh. Hi, I'm at. How are you? Perfect. On the fourth, on the fourth page under discussion, uh, Mr. Pratt, his last name is spelled wrong. I didn't even notice. <laughs> That's it. That's all I got. Okay. Okay. All righty. All right. Motion. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes with uh, corrections. I'll second. All righty. Roll call. Was uh, Jerry, what do you say? Aye. Brian Pranka, what do you say? Aye. And Mehmet, what do you say? Aye. Very good. <laughs> Okay. Anything else, Dennis? We have about you six to, minutes. You want to skip to the North Pond cleanup? We can discuss that a little bit. Sure. I believe there was a date was set on that. Uh-huh. Let's talk uh, about that because there's a couple going on, right? This weekend is when Andre is going to be doing his Eagle project. He's going to be there Saturday and Sunday. You're talking about the one with the boat, right? Well, we can talk about both of them. Okay. I believe so, that also this weekend. Um, weekend. I know, Dennis, you sent me a message. I apologize. I haven't been able to get back to it yet. Yeah, we want to get the we want to get the uh, container over in the Scotts uh, driveway. What was the date on that, Chris? The uh, I think you said twenty second and twenty third. 22nd, 23rd, and then keep it there for poss possibly the week. Right. If anybody else can uh, get out and 
grab a boat and grab whatever. He's saying that we can put tires and whatever debris that we can find on North Pond land in that uh, container. Oh, Super. So, uh, so, yes. We'll have Dan, the scouts will have kids there. I know Andre's going to be working on his thing, right? Which is separate from this, but there'll still be bodies that are there. I, I would ask. Norm, has anybody from Lake Management or CRC or not CRC, Citizens of Mankind, yeah, anybody from either of those groups getting involved this weekend as well? I actually think they already. Yeah, CRC is involved with it. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And uh, Dan Hess said that he could get some volunteers. He's gone <laughs> those days, but he can get some volunteers. And if you, you know, if those guys, if the scouts are up there and they want to bring some bags and they find trash and they want to just bring it to the edge, it'll be easy yeah. just to bring it downhill to put it on the barge. Right, right. When do, we, when do we have access to that, Dennis? What time? Do you know? What time? I, I can, you're a little bit. Uh... Sorry about that. What time do we have availability of the barge? Okay, well, within, uh, I'll check with Dick. I believe it's available at any time, but I'll make sure that we reserve it for specific times. If you let me know, I'll, I'll put a reserve on it. Yeah, I, I think if we have a, a fast and firm time that we could just put out there, it just helps people. I, I, I say, why not meet at nine o'clock and just yeah. kick things off? Hmm? Sure. Do we know what the address is and where the bus is? Sorry, Norm, I missed that. Do we know what the address of where the dumpster will be? I get that for you in two minutes. Can you hear me? I think it's on Castle Street, but I'm not sure the exact number. It is. Yeah, you're going to access it from the end of Castle Street. It's right in the first uh, parking area on Castle Street. Castle Street. It'll be the one with the dumpster in it. Okay, I'll, I'll right. check out where that is. I'm not exactly sure where it is, but I'll send you. I'll send you the map. I, I got some maps that I sent out. Um, if it's not too far, I could bring my tractor over because I think there's a hill that has to go up. It's a 30-yard dumpster, so we can put quite a bit of debris in there. He's, Scott said that it's possible we could drive a small tractor. He just doesn't want to tear up his lawn. If we have something with soft trot tires, maybe we could. Oh, uh, OK. It's a little bit of an embankment. <clears throat> to get so it we'll get from the, the shore up to the driveway? Yeah, it would be probably best to hand it off, you know, instead of one right. person carrying it all the way. And I. When we went out there and looked uh, with Chris the other day, it looks like a lot of those docks have already been cut up and are placed on the shore. Yeah, there were quite a few of them yeah. that were. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, but there will still. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's a ton left. Right. And yeah, there were some other. Oh, go ahead. There was some other debris that wasn't docks that probably could get. Uh, thrown in the dumpster too that's just hanging on the shoulder line. Right. A lot of the uh, stuff blows down towards that end of the lake and oh, ends up finds way on the shore there. So it's possible that's more stuff there. Let me see if I can pull up the legal ad for our first hearing. Okie doke. See, that's gonna be 102 Lakeview. Hold on. 102 more vining. Yeah, Mark. Sorry. I get confused. There's too many 102s here. <laughs> now you know why I made a mistake. You didn't make any mistakes, Gene. That's just right. a computer. <laughs> okay. 102. More vining. Got it. <clears throat> the Southwood Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing under the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act, General Law C-131 and Section 40 of the Southwood Conservation Commission Regulations and Bylaw Chapter 182 and Chapter 450 for request for determination. The project location is Map 156, Parcel 
102 Mort Vining Road, Southwick, Mass. The project would be a repair of an existing septic system within the buffer area of a BVW. They're hearing be held right now. Welcome everyone, Chris Pratt, Chair for the Commission. I think right. we have Barry Searle representing the applicant. Excuse me, before I get started, just for the record, I was the Title V inspector that failed the system. Okay, thank you, Brian. You're welcome. Barry, are you with us? He was. Yell louder, Dennis, beep the horn. <laughs> Barry, your chair is empty. <laughs> we do have it on the agenda for 710. Right. Um, Jen, are you the, the property I, owner? Yes. You could start it. I, you, could, yeah. you could probably uh, take care uh, of it. All right. Yeah. Just tell me, Chris, just tell me we're good to go. And that's all I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> if I can just get the okay to have them start digging, that would be fantastic. That is all we're looking for. But I, I thought um, he was going to be on the call. I know he was, right? He was. He's still on the call, but he's not in his chair. Oh, he's there somewhere. He is. I don't know if you can see the plan. Like yeah. He, he drew a lovely plan. Anyway, I know that. He did. <clears throat> so what's the project here? <clears throat> This is a uh, repair of a uh, existing septic, the corner of uh, Mort Vining and Nicholson Hill Road. Yep. You can see the wetland is right, right on the road. The uh, system itself is just over the 50 foot uh, buffer line. You can see the erosion control. Yeah. Is it going to be a raised system? I can't quite read the small print there. That's that's a good question for Barry. <laughs> yeah. Jen, do you know is it going to be a raised system? So is it going to come up out of the ground? Oh, it's not. Okay. It's oh, it's off to the side. Look, uh, just the blueprints show that. I'm not seeing a pump in there. Yeah, there's no pump. So it's, it is gravity nice. Yep. Where was the existing one? Go ahead. You, you're you're it was better a at that. Right. Seven. Seven. This is where Barry is. Uh, is Barry on, on the call? This is where he should step in. Yeah, Barry's here. He comes. I come in the room right now. Here he comes. Hey, guys. Here Sorry. Right, Barry. Hello, everybody. Sorry I stepped out for a minute. Okay, so we're looking at the design on the. Uh, just wondering you, where. You, okay. the okay. well, the system was about gradient ninety eight. So it's basically. What was, the, what was the question? The old system, Barry. The old system is somewhat unknown, actually. We know the tank is where the new one is. I can point, but. Yeah, right off the tank about 98. Barry, it's Brian Franca. Hi, Brian. Where are you? Great. So yeah, it was it was about about 98. We didn't dig it up to find exactly where it went, but that's ex that's about where the old system, the D box was. Barry, do you want to do a screen share or do you want me to continue? Go ahead, Dennis. Um, did you have the plan? Can you put the plan back up there? Or do you need to? Yeah. There you go. All right. So, yeah, we're coming off the same uh, sewer pipe out of the house, confirming its structural integrity and putting the new tank exactly where the old one was. And we're bypassing the old D box. Um, I wanted to situate this outside of the 50 foot buffer line there, but. Uh, far enough downhill that we could get this in by gravity <clears throat> into the new D box, into the new leach field, rather than uh, propose a pump system, which would be an added burden on the owners and a lot more complicated all the way around. Now, um, the uh, you're, you're technology, what? 
I prescribed a uh, Elgin system for this, which under Title V allows a two foot separation. And so um, that allowed us to get this engineered in there by gravity. So um, I used the, uh, Dennis was kind enough to furnish me the um, wetland delineation that was done by, I believe, DL Bean some while ago. So all I did was overlay that and um, drew the 50 foot line and it worked out okay. We were able to situate our leach field outside of the 50 feet and um, still get it in there by gravity. We, you might notice um, directly like at 12 o'clock above where the tank is drawn, a little rectangle says DH2 and a little circle with an X through there. That's yeah. right. That was our second uh, attempt to find another location, but it turned out it was higher than the one that we used. And I had to rule that out. So we've drawn in a uh, sedimentation barrier just downhill of the new leach field. And um, we're outside of the 100 foot radius from the well. And it just was able to tuck it right in there, basically. You're not leaving yourself a whole lot of room to work, though. It looks like there's a, a minimum amount of space between the uh, siltation barrier and the actual yes. work. I mean, the, the grading is. You're right. way you can push that back a little, huh? Well, if it's all right with you, we could push the silt fence downhill a little bit. It'd still be outside of the wetland. Um, I just drew it there thinking uh, to maximize the distance. And he can kind of work from uphill and work his way down a little bit. Barry, who's going to do the work? Uh, um, Mark's Property Services. Mark no, no, no. Nope, actually the Crestview is doing the work. Oh, yeah. Okay. Two estimates, Crestview is going to be doing it. So not, that guys... that should, not that that should matter. I mean, I mean, not that, that So what matter. do you guys think about uh, moving the sill fence instead of the, yeah, I, mean, I was I... talking about moving the system, but he, if Barry would rather move the sill fence. I don't see a problem with that. I mean, it's, uh, is that yard there now, Jen? Or the sill fence is on the plan? I'm sorry, this? say that again. Can you see where the silt fence is next to the system? Is that all lawn there right now? It's all lawn. Yeah. yeah so he, I mean, I don't see a problem with him moving the silt fence back to you the more work. It over. It's a real gentle slope too. It's not like anything's going to go rushing down into the wetland. Right. Yeah. And right. it's grass anyway, so it's not like it's going to silt in. Oh, we yeah. don't want to see Crestview or Mark's property or whoever does it get out there and say, you know, you're just cramping us. We, there's no way we're going to be able to get our equipment in there. Yeah, good thought. Yeah. yeah. Definitely don't see a problem myself. But. Okay. You can relay that to them, Jen, when they get on site. Can you, what, what is that that I'm relaying to them again? I'm sorry. So Sean, Sean's here too, just to hear, because I, I didn't hear you quite well. Can you just repeat it again? Do you want me to, Dennis, or just um, the... They're allowing us to move the siltation barrier, the okay. sedimentation barrier downhill a little more to allow them more room to get in there and work and do the job. Oh, okay, great. I, I'd say as long as there's 25 feet between the silt barrier and the wetlands, it should be safe, right? Yeah. Yeah. That would be a good thing, actually, yeah. I mean, this is not new construction. This is a repair of a of a bad system. So we have to have some flexibility, I would think. Yeah, I appreciate it. Love that, thank you. I appreciate it as well. Yeah. That's good, everybody appreciates it. That's, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any other questions or? Uh... No, no good. I, think, I, I think we're good. Thank you guys. Well. We got a vote. I'll, I'll take a motion. Uh, oh, okay. On the, on the proposed. Just kidding. <laughs> That's okay. I'll make a motion to accept it with moving the salt fence within 25 feet. I'll second it. Okay. Brian Pranka first it. And Jerry, was that you second it? Yep. That's me. 
Okay. So that's a, a negative, uh, negative approval, right? Negative yep. determination. Right, with moving the silt fence. Okay, and Matt, what do you say? Aye. Aye as well. And David? Aye. Very good, it's unanimous. Excellent. All right, guys, thank you very much. Thank All right, you. thanks good for luck. coming. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank okay. you, we appreciate it. Thank you guys. Thank you. All right, next, let me find the next legal notice. Oscar, I got the cat on. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, big mustache, Dennis. Sorry about that. That's okay. Let's the next see. one's an NOI for Sada Mountain. Sada Mountain Road, NOI. Hold on, let me find it. Um, want to do more finding? <coughs> Darn cat. <clears throat> well, at least he didn't cancel the meeting. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Is that an option? <laughs> <laughs> I make a motion. <laughs> okay. There, I got it. I got it. Hold Last on. meeting. I got to share, uh, share screen. <clears throat> and why? <coughs> there you go. Mm -hmm. hey, the South Dakota Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing under the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act, General Law C, 131, Section 40 for the South Dakota Conservation Commission oh. regulations and bylaw chapter 182 and chapter 450 for a notice of intent. The proposed project location is Sada Mountain Road, map 107, parcels two to one. The applicant uh, proposes to construct a single family home and associated site improvements within the buffer zone to a wetland resource area. If you're here to be held right now, welcome everyone. Chris Pratt, Chair of the Commission. Hello, everyone. Ryan Nelson from Ryan. R. Levesque Associates, uh, representing Mr. Dan DuMace. Um, this is property owned by Mr. Edwin Beckwith. I'm going to attempt to share my screen so I can key you guys in as to where this is. So here's South Loomis Street running north to south. Sada Mountain Road is a dead end here, or now it is a dead end. It used to continue all the way up into Granville, but this portion of the road has been abandoned. It's no longer maintained. Uh, it's pretty washed out. I don't think you can even drive your truck up it. Um, there's a gate located at the end of the road here. And there's a, obviously the maintained portion of road is located right here. Um, so Dan Alexak, who's a surveyor, um, partitioned a piece of this parcel, it's about three acres. I don't believe the plan was ever recorded though. So we're calling it a proposed parcel and we're treating this parcel here, this 2.1 parcel as the parent parcel when we get into terms of talking riverfront area and wetland resource areas. Um, so let me switch back to the plan here. All right, it's a pretty tight site and at the scale, there's a lot going on here, but I'll try and explain it. So Sada Mountain Road is here on your right. There's a, a drainage gully along the road that um, would need to be spanned, but I'll back up. Right there. There's wetlands located at the downhill side of the lot here. So this is the wetland boundary, the A series right here. Part of it goes through an existing meadow. I'm not sure what the use of this property was, but um, there's an old stone foundation here. There's grassed areas, there's piles of fill, disturbed areas, a bunch of successional brush and invasives. So it's, it's been altered at some point. Um, Dismal Brook is a stream that comes down off of Sada Mountain. There's a couple intermittent feeder streams going to it, this one here, and then this one out by the road. Originally, when we were looking at this property, um, current USGS mapping showed Dismal Brook as a dashed intermittent stream. Um, I did a stream stats delineation point on Dismal Brook, and it came in just under the criteria that uh, would deem it intermittent. So we thought we were dealing with just a buffer zone project. Um, when we submitted the notice of intent, Mark Stinson did a thorough review and picked up that I had the wrong delineation point on stream stats. Uh, it should have been just a little farther down and that put it over the thresholds to make it a perennial stream in terms of watershed area and the flow duration during a drought. 
So we've made some edits um, just to make everyone aware that these edits were submitted today. Mark didn't have a chance, obviously, to review an issue of file number. So we'll need to continue, but I can keep uh, introducing the project. Hey, Ryan, just to, just to be clear, this, what we're looking at, are the most recent edits, correct? Yes, correct. Okay. Yep. So Dismal Brook is located, it starts off site of this, of this subdivided parcel, comes down the mountain, uh, some waterfalls and cascades over here, and continues this dotted line down past, past the, the to be divided parcel. Um, and the riverfront area that's imparted from that, the 100 foot boundary is this dashed line right here. And the 200 foot boundary is this dashed line here. So in an effort to keep away from the wetlands and riverfront area, um, we're trying to, we tried to site the projects as far away as, as from those areas as we could, but we faced a couple constraints. Um, one being we're limited to the access on Sodom Mountain Road. The only paved or maintained portion of the road is this segment here. Um, the dead end gate is right here. It also is very steep. So the, re the remainder of this Beckwith property isn't really accessible in terms of feasibility. We have applied for a variance to the ZBA for relief from the front yard setback. In this zone, the front yard setback is 75 feet and the building inspector's interpretation was that it includes from the abandoned roadway portion as well. Hmm. So that put our house right on the edge of the wetland. Um, so we've submitted a variance to ZBA, which is pending, um, requesting relief to put the, the house closer to that uh, property line of the abandoned way. Um, the buffer zone to the wetlands, this is the 50 foot buffer, this line shown here. And then the 100 foot buffer zone makes a U shape here. And that's stemming from the stream here, the wetlands here, and the stream up here. Um, <coughs> the applicant is proposing to keep things as minimal as he can. We're showing a, a modest house, um, about 35 feet wide, I think by 40. Uh, it's gonna be a drive underneath garage. Um, there's going to be a walkway and retaining walls coming up to the front door here, a driveway turnaround here, uh, a, a deck on piers in the back, and then a series of short three and a half foot retaining walls uh, here to catch back up to grade into the hillside. There's perk tests that were done this past winter right here in this area. So the proposed septic system will be in this area. Um, it's located outside the 50 foot wetland buffer per Title V. So that was a struggle in itself, getting this whole site to work, keeping the septics uh, out of the 50 foot buffer and then have the elevations work with the house still. Um, there was an existing, I think a historic kind of drainage rivulet that came down off the Sada Mountain Road. Um, I think there's been some changes over the past. I'm not sure if it was DPW or who, who's done it, but there's been, you know, check dams and different swales put in here to presumably stop washout from occurring on these houses down on Sada Mountain Road. It doesn't appear that this gully here was used or has been, you know, containing water recently. I didn't see any evidence of scouring. There was a bunch of leaf litter still. I think there's a check dam that was rerouting water shown by this stream here. So, the applicant's proposing to fill that in. And then just as a safeguard, make a swale uphill of all these improvements to kind of intercept any groundwater or sheet flow coming from the hill around the, uh, the house site. Um, so, Ryan, so the yep. abandoned roadway, right? Who, yes. who owns that? Is that part of the lot or is it still belong to the town? Um, that's a good surveyor Mark shoot question. Um, to, from I could be wrong, but my I think my my thought was I was told this could be wrong. If the road is abandoned for X amount of time, I believe the landowners on either side then own to the center of the road. Right. Um, but I'm not sure what the time frame of all of this has been. So Ryan, if you walk to the end of that road, there's a sign there that says. Um, uh, something about the Selectman 
no trespassing per town signed by the selectmen hmm. where the gate is i remember the gate i don't remember a sign but it's very well possible yeah there's two there's two signs there because i was going to walk up through there and it says no trespassing per selectman hmm. well i don't know what that was about the south select board really yeah Wow. Liability wise, it's a pretty rough road. It's abandoned property. To, well, it's a good, it's a great place to hike up through and climb the mountain up and behind my house. Hmm. Ryan, I had a, a question of uh, why the driveway would be on the side towards the wetlands and not on the opposite side. Why the the house is situated with the the driveway closer to the wetlands instead of being further away from them. Sure. So. Uh, there was, let's see, I'm trying to get my bearings. Uh, there's a culvert crossing here. Um, and if we came in up on the high side, it would have interfered with the septic location. And the septic really can't go anywhere on this property than where it's shown due to setbacks for new construction. It looks like there'd be plenty of room to put a driveway in and still a septic system. Well, uh, if you don't mind, I tuned back in because I've been, I did those perk tests and I've been asked to do the septic design. That's very steep uphill of where the, the uh, leach field is proposed. And I think it'd be really problematic to put a, a driveway really anywhere else. But I, I mean, the, the whole driveway is within the 50 foot buffer, right? Correct. So. Yeah. If I can just clarify the proposed driveway route. There's already kind of an entrance here. There's a break in the stone wall. There's a break in the tree line. Um, we would just be utilizing that. If we were to, you could put the driveway to intersect Saddle Mountain Road another 10, 20 feet west. Um, you'd still be the same proximity to the streams. You'd be a little farther away from this wetland, but then it would require busting apart the whole stone wall and cutting some forest down. Um, so, I mean, it's, it was a, a give and take no matter where you shifted things on the property. Um, a consideration we also wanted to take into account was stormwater management because of, you know, the lo topographic location of this property um, at the base of a hill. We are showing a proposed rain garden here that would collect not only roof leader water from the house, but also trench drains from the retaining walls and around the foundation that would discharge to this rain garden area here. Uh, this next sheet shows it better. And then there would be a beehive uh, yard drain grate at the uh, corner of this rain garden area. So once the water came up to a certain elevation, it would spill over into the grate and then down to a culvert with sufficient cover underneath the driveway and then outlet within the limit of work here um, within the existing meadow area. Um, so that's kind of the gist of the layout of the project. Um, Mark Stinson's comments relating to riverfront area, we had to kind of shift gears to address riverfront area performance standards, which weren't originally submitted, but um, I know you guys didn't have a chance to look at it, but I did prepare those today. Um, if you're talking performance standards for alteration of riverfront area, I believe you're allowed up to 5,000 square feet or 10% of riverfront area on the property, whichever is greater. So in this case, um, the subject parent parcel owned by Mr. Beckwith is, you know, 60 something acres. Um, and I did a rough, you know, estimation. I measured the stream across this property with a 200 foot wide riverfront area corridor on each side. Um, and that gave us roughly at least 650,000 square feet of riverfront area. And our proposed total alteration is 22,386, which put us at 3% riverfront area alteration at the most. Um, you're, so you're taking the entire parcel. You're not taking just the five acres that this is going to be on. And how does that work? Right. So there's, if you look at, uh, Section 1058 for the riverfront area performance standards, it will say for lots subject or created, well, I think it's what, August 6th or 7th, 1997 or six before that. Um, but this would be a lot created after that. So you have to 
take into account any lots created from the parent parcel after that date, you're only allowed, so to speak, one bite at the apple. So, you know, if this project chews up 3% riverfront area from the parent parcel, Mr. Beckwith can't subdivide another area and have that new parcel chew up another 10%. It has to be ten percent of the parent parcel. Okay, because I was I was about to ask that question, right? So Correct. he can't all of a sudden say, "Okay, we're going to sell off everything but this one acre piece of property right here," and then we're back doing the same calculation again, and that can go on and on and on and on until you finally hit that five percent. Right. So yeah, that's why it's important for projects like this to to keep track of what the riverfront area disturbances are. Because eventually that parent parcel runs out of the bite at the apple for riverfront area. I think it'd be um, nice to do a site, see a site visit, uh, take a look at it. Is the waterfall still running or is it dried up by now? Yes, nope, everything's still running. So yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to show you guys the site. Um, I definitely think everyone should see it. Um, you know, we're trying to trying to make make a parcel or a piece of Mr. Beckwith's land work so he can get something for it because really the rest, the remaining hundred or so acres is so steep and rocky. This is really the only feasible alternative for this property. So when you say make it work for Mr. Beckwith, is he building the house for himself or is he looking to, is this like a spec house he's building? No, so uh, Mr. Dumais, who we are working for, Dan Dumais, he had a specific house layout in mind. He really likes the property. Um, he's a builder, I think, from Simsbury, but this is going to be a, a home for him and his wife, a personal home. Um, they like the location. They like the stream. They like the quietness of the dead end. Uh, they like Southwick. Um, Mr. Beckwith um, has probably a purchase and sale with them uh, to sell them the property pending all these permitting approvals. Yeah, let's go. So, Ryan, how much of this is flagged in the field right now, just in case some of the commissioners can't make it on a spit? specific date and they want to go out there and just take a peek on their own is, yeah it, is it, it's it's all flagged the wetlands oh along the meadow are easily visible this stream's very apparent um dismal brook through the woods gets a little thick and brushy but it's really it, I mean, this whole project site is half an acre so it's not as big as it looks so i'd be happy to you know set a date and go out there with the commissioners when they have the time but if anybody wants to look at it on their own it's fairly obvious then. Yeah, that'd be great, Dennis. Do you have any questions about the septic? That's the only place it can go, Barry? Yes. And in fact, uh, we're going to be doing trenches there instead of a leach bed. We, the, the space is so limited that we're going to have the reserve area placed in between the trenches, which is allowed under Title V. What's the groundwater look like? Is it a high groundwater level in that area? Yes, but the bigger issue yeah. is the boulders, gigantic boulders there everywhere. It was actually hard to dig the perk test because there's so many rocks and boulders there. But um, we can make it work with the grades and it will be not too obnoxious actually. Would it be a pump system though? No, I no. think it would be gravity. Yes. Yep. Thank, thanks for the info, Barry. Yeah, we just showed um, a schematic right now, you know, box pretty much, but the elevations are set based on your perk test. So elevation should all work. Yep. Yep. When do you want to go, Dennis? You tell me. Anytime Thursday or Friday works for me. That sounds good. Thursday? Thursday. Quick question, Good Barry, morning. do you have the well set yet? Or is well, you have a destination? Yes, actually, thanks for asking. If you see the, the three retaining walls to the top left of the proposed house, it's gonna be up in that corner somewhere. As far as I know, the owner, uh, Dan, was gonna approach the well driller about the feasibility of going up that abandoned road enough to get in there with his rig. Mm -hmm. You get 100 well, feet, be pretty high uphill. Did you get 100 feet? Yes, yes. We, we showed a schematic one located right here for now. Oh, okay. Um, but okay. I remember Dan did telling me that also. I just showed it here because I wasn't sure exactly 
placing it in the town right away or up near there if that was right kosher or not. But here's the hundred foot buffer zone. So yes, there is room to shift that north or west. Yeah. Okay. So we were talking about Thursday. Who's in? Who's got time? Me. What time do you want to go, Dave? I could do. Who, who's me? Is that Chris? This guy. This yes. Guy. Yes. Uh, I could do any time on Thursday. Truly, what's good for you, Chris? Ten. Yeah, ten o'clock. All right. And it is, and we'll be continuing this until uh, June, it'll be June 6th. June I'm not gonna 7th. have my car that morning, so I can't do it. Sorry guys. <laughs> 10 you need really someone to pick you up? I mean, you're in Suffolk. It's not like we have to go to- Right. We can the problem problems. is if we go to this and then I have to be at work at 11, that's just not going to work. Oh, well, I'm not driving, driving you to work. I mean, no. that's, I'm not you Uber. drive me to work. <laughs> you I can do it earlier. Me. Sure. You want me to come back and pick you up? I mean, we could do <laughs> earlier. If you guys went with nine o'clock, I'd probably try and meet you there. We could do nine. I you can do, do nine. Nine, nine. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'm kind of into my beauty sleep, though, pal. That's all I got to say. I am. Oh, I can't. Sorry, I can't do nine. I was just reminded. <clears throat> Driving my grandson to school. Ten o'clock it is. Ten o'clock it is. Yeah, yeah. We can do nine thirty. <laughs> I'll be working to support you guys. So forget it. <laughs> Would you? Oh, we need this. You live right up there, Brian. You could just take a look at it on your on your free time. And <laughs> so much of your free time that you have. <laughs> just stop rejecting everybody's septic system and you'd have more title five <laughs> or, or more time i should say i gotta go somebody's gotta go sniff them <laughs> <laughs> i want to hear him when you said hey that's one i approved <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't they wouldn't be talking to us that's right that's true. All right, Dean, you need to take a vote on the continuance, Chris, or is that? Uh, uh, I'll make a motion to continue to our next meeting, which would be, is the seventh, Gene? Seventh. I'll second that. Okay. Aye. And Jerry? Aye. And Brian? Aye. Okay. We're continued. Thank you. I'm going to sign out, I think. Okay, Barry, thank you. Yeah. Take Thanks, care. Barry. Take care. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Okay. okay, now we're on the Lakeview, Dennis. On the Lakeview. Okay. The South of Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing under the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act, General LLC 131 and Section 40 of the South of Conservation Commission Regulation and Bylaw Chapter 182 and Chapter 450 for a notice of intent. Okay. Project location is 102 Lakeview Street, map 114, parcel 90, Southwick, Mass. The applicant proposes restoration and repair of existing retaining wall with associated site improvements and a portion of which is within the buffer zone to the Lake Con to Lake Congamond. You're going to be held right now. Welcome everyone. Christopher Pratt, Chair of the Commission. Good everyone. Ryan Nelson from R. Levesque Associates again. I'm going to try and pull up some photos here so you guys can get an idea. So this is 102 Lakeview Street. That's close. Yep, there's an existing partial concrete stone rubble wall that was, I've been told, was put in in the 40s or 50s. It's very old. Um, they're looking to remove this wall and put in a short, one of those vinyl sea walls, similar to oh, nice. what's uh, Andre Scully's project we did across the way there. Yeah. Um, 
see. There's an, another look at it. So they'd be removing this, putting in a sheet piling wall. Um, there's a, a detail of how that would work. So it's these vinyl uh, panels that are vibrated into place, um, upgrading of the bank once everything is ripped out. There'd be a, a capstone put on top um, within the lawn, you know, flush to the top of that wall. So there'd be a reveal of not that much. It's pretty short. I think, oh, I don't know, a foot or so. Um, this is in the flood zone. The flood zone is at elevation 229. Uh, the work to be conducted along the shore is about 225. So we have notes on our plan. It's pretty imperative that the contractor install the wall at the elevation shown and that no fill is placed behind there or the yard raised up because that would be filled within bordering land subject to flooding. Uh, we don't have the comp storage on this site to compensate for that. So we're keeping it as just a buffer zone project. There's an existing lawn that kind of transitions the beach here. That's going to stay the same. So the wall is just kind of going to turn and feather into grade uh, right there. So whole gist of the project, single family home, there's an upper terrace here, kind of a lower walkout basement here, removing an existing concrete retaining wall, replacing it with a vinyl sheet piling wall with a capstone and then you know some minor lawn amendments behind that to meet flush with the top of that wall. Um, work would likely be down, done during drawdown period um, with erosion controls or, you know, the silt fence or a silt sock or a um, silt screen installed along the shore around that work zone. Um, other than that, that's the only work they're proposing. All right. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Are they proposing any kind of erosion control in the water? Um, our hope was, I, I was talking with uh, a contractor who did some others on the, on the lake. And if it's done during drawdown, they told me they have room to put in a silt fence or silt sock on the downhill side. No. Um, so that would be the goal for this one. I don't know that there's such a thing as drawdown. I know <laughs> if you have a drought in the summer, there, it might drop a little bit, but you're not going to drop much more than you know, six or eight inches. Okay. Norm, do you have any uh, information on that? And what our, our normal drop would be during the summer months? It's not a heck of a lot. It's, I don't think it's six inches. I think it's, uh, it's more around four. Right, last year it might've gotten down to six or eight, but it, you know, normally, I mean, it's not a heck of a lot. So it would, you know, there's not really a draw down period that you would talk about. So I would, I would recommend some sort of uh, barrier in the water. Okay, yeah, we can certainly work able to that, like a, a floating silt screen or something. Right. Work zone, yep. Yep. I, I do like the idea of the vinyl. It's a lot less uh, impact. Oh yeah, absolutely. How are they yeah, gonna I take mean, the out- The wall just looks like it's just seeping silt into yeah. the lake anyways. Yeah. What's, what's, the pathway to, what's the pathway to remove the existing wall? Um, probably a, a mini excavator to dislodge those pieces. Um, I'm not sure how they're going to get the mini down there because it's retaining walls. I don't know if they get permission from a neighbor. Otherwise, I think they have to set it down in there with a crane. There's really no other way in there. But, yeah. But yeah, you need a mini excavator to remove those blocks. I know, even I am. Yeah. yeah, that's one one of the concerns that we've had in <laughs> previous uh, removals of, uh, and it's happened. I've seen it done successfully, actually sliding them out in some cases, but it is going to be a challenge. Right, and um, I, I I know it's not final, but I believe the applicant was talking with Tim Sychev, who I'm sure you guys know. He did Andre Scully's project, and he's pretty attentive, smart guy to these type of things. So. Okay. I guess so. Hmm. Oh, anybody have any other questions or discussion? When is the work going to start? Um, probably this summer. And that's the only thing he wants to do is that retaining wall. There's no other, nothing else on this project. 
That's correct. That's it. I think the plan is better than the current conditions. So, absolutely. Uh, it, man, it's it, it, those are historical. Uh, stone <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. We can move them up to the center of town and proudly display them for the <laughs> citizens Probably there from the, from the flood. Yeah. It looks pretty straightforward. I just uh, oh, would like Matt. to have some more information on the on how it's going to be removed, but. It's up to you guys. I'll make a motion to accept the project. Well, we have to close the hearing first. It's yeah. an MI, but then I'll make a motion to close the hearing. Okay. Does this does this have does this is this going to have a bond at all attached to it because of its proximity to the lake and whatnot? Yeah, I think that's a good idea, Mamet. We could go um, there. Normal ten thousand. Yeah, we can do. We can make that motion when we get to that part. That sounds great. I'll second the motion to close the hearing. Okay, Matt, what do you say to that? Aye. Uh, Brian? Aye. And Jerry? Aye. Okay, hearing is closed. And now we'll do a motion. Uh, David, do you wanna make the motion on the? Yeah, I'll make a motion to accept the project with a $10,000 bond. Can I make a suggestion, please? Yes, Brian. Rock on. Um, I think I think the project should move forward, but I just think when they figure out how they're going to rip that wall out, that should be just somebody needs to look at it, and somebody needs to say it's okay if they're going to start ripping down retaining walls. Other fences or or supports might need to be put in there. It's just a, a precaution because it is close to the lake. I I agree. That's a great idea. In the erosion control, it'd be good to have on on a plan too. Right. I'm not sure what kind of erosion control you would use, if it well, would be a regular I, fence or whether it would be floating or. Yeah, depending on, like Brian said, if they have to rip things out or change the gradient to get the tractor or the excavator down there, you might want uh, yeah, to have more. in front of the equipment and then again in the water with a silt screen, with a floating silt screen. You know what? Should we should we just bring on the contractor to a meeting just to make sure that everybody's on the same page before they start ripping stuff apart? Can we, you know, basically approve it with the contractor being somewhat kind of like say, hey, show up at a meeting, or Dennis is going to have to babysit this whole project? Too many variables. Yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't know that we can, we've never requested that before, so I'm not sure that we can. But. We've done that. We've done that before, Chris. We've had uh, contractors come in and explain the projects. And I don't know if they're, Ryan, they're not in a big rush to close this, are they? I mean, I know you'd no. like to get it off, your, off the books, but. Yeah, I mean, uh, isn't usually a pre construction meeting a requirement anyway? Yeah, but yeah. more in writing, though, because you want to have it say, hey, look, this is what you need to do. I mean, I maybe mean, just have to show it on the plan so you're all set, Ryan, but maybe. Yeah, I mean, I'm all conditions, you know. Yeah, I'm all, I'm all for that. Uh, clarifying in the order conditions and anything you guys think, you know, to ensure the safety of it, we're, we're okay with. Again, just could, close to the lake. You could put it in the decision that they have to come back with a, uh, a plan how, it's, how you're going to remove the existing uh, debris. I think that might be the best way around it. That way we can close this and then we'll be in a, in a plan in a, in a plan show in a plan with the uh, some type of erosion control to some kind of barriers. Right. That would be the, uh, <clears throat> right. the, the removal plan. We, we all agree it needs to get done. It's just exactly how to go about mucking up the water. Can I say that? Yeah, absolutely. Lucky. I just want to close any any loose ends before, you know, we have to go back and revisit it. It could get ugly real quick. I like I like the removal plan idea. I think that's a good sound decision. Oh, yeah, I think so too. We so can we could we could accept this project, but we could say we want to see a prior removal plan from the contractor himself. Just because it is. Would that be an order of conditions, Dennis? Can right. we do order conditions in NOI? If you make it an order of conditions, it is. Yeah. 
then that's what we do. Make it so. Make yeah. it so. Okay, Brian, yes, you sir. make it so. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> make it so, number one. Well, I'll tell you what. No, say <laughs> what you're, you know, just, you're, so you're take that recording. Everything's being recorded now, right? So let's just play right. that back because I did really well the first time. Second time can't go. <laughs> okay. Well, I think what you were talking about is approving this wall, but you wanted to have an order of conditions that the uh, the person doing the work comes back with a plan for the removal of the existing wall. Correct. Written plan. So okay. it's not a question. With a, with a defined erosion control plan too. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So that sounds like we've hit everything with a $10,000 bond. And David made the lot of right to do. And, <laughs> yeah. And Brian, did you sec was that a second from Brian or Mehmet? I'll do it. I don't care. Okay, a second from Brian. Well, the yep. conditions laid out. And uh, Dave, what do you say? Aye. And Jerry? Aye. And I as well? Aye. Okay. See if uh, Gene and Dennis can get that written out correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, that sounds great. Makes a lot of sense, Brian. Yeah. Sorry. That's not a sorry. That's a good thing. Oh, for making sense. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'll cost you a round. Uh -huh. That'll be someday soon, I hope. Uh, okay. So we're good on that. Great. Uh, Thank you. For now, until the uh, other plan comes in. Okay, so we have an NOI on Fred Jackson that's continued because we're still waiting for information from the state. Dennis, is that the one? Ask Ryan if he has an update on that for us. Okay, Ryan, do you have an update? Yeah, that's status quo. Um, still waiting on a decision from DEP. I know it's on David Fowles' list of things to do. Just haven't heard anything yet. Okay. Hopefully that will be soon. Yep. All right, so we can move on to some new business, uh, Lake Chemical Treatment. That's going to be, the, is it the 18th? Yeah. Oh, today. What is today? That was today. No um, business. Yeah, Michelle put some signs out so she knows. <laughs> <laughs> Did uh, anybody follow them around, Norm, and take a look to see where they were treating? Uh, I know. The areas were very well specified that they were going to do, but I don't know if anybody followed them around or not. Yeah, I saw them. I, I think next year we, you know, the commission used to, and I used to go out there with Ray and, you know, look at the site before, you know, to find out where they're going to treat. We discussed this before. And, you know, if we go out there too late in the season in the, in the spring, then it's already coming up through the water. It's already too late to treat it. Isn't there a better way we can? determine at the end of the season where the, the treatment should be for next year? Would that make more sense? Mm. Yeah, I think that sounds good to me, Dennis, because I know that I have curly pondweed in front of my house. Um, it just kind of takes over the whole area. Um, and that's the know, area we had- Like right now, you would never know what's there. We had discussed that with one of the people out there as we're doing the boat ride. And he said, <clears throat> if you can see it coming out of the water, it's too late to treat it because it's already, you don't nip it in the bud. And that's where the expression comes from. You have to Let's nip see. it before it's in the bud. So if you, is right. there any way we can set it up for, you know, later in the season this year to find out where the problem areas are? So they go back there in the spring. They don't have to look for something that is or isn't there. We will bring that up at the next meeting. That sounds great. All right. No. Yep. Okay. Um, schedule a work session for LPP stuff. Um, do we need to do that yet, or are we going to wait on that to do it another time? I know I, I am. Uh, okay, go ahead, Gene. I spoke with Gene today. I know we're way behind on our uh, applicants. Well, today was the last day for the applications, well, and we're we are we're far behind on um, where people, we were last year. There's- are supplying us with all the information so they can't hold us responsible for holding up their 
permits and they don't we don't get everything that we need from them and I'm trying to we're trying to find out if we can get somebody from the state to come to the meeting so we can discuss some of these issues and get a different perspective. Well, um, I can come up with a complete list of like the checks I have and the applications I have and what's wrong with each of them. Yeah. And you know, put that out there and you guys can do what you want with it. That's a good idea. Because according to uh, the lady from the DEP, Connecticut Shoreline is not subject to uh, chapter 91. So that kind of changes things around. It's, I don't know if Connecticut has their own chapter 91 access to shoreline or- you know, Well, we have, an, we have an understanding with Suffield where there's a, a certain amount of money given each year. Yeah. For that purpose. That doesn't reflect chapter 91. That's just a little. No, that's just, it's just an agreement. And, and so what, if we're going to we're going to tell people that they have to allow access to the shoreline to everyone. That's true in Massachusetts. Is it true in Connecticut? We need to find that out before we try to right. impose things on people. You mean like the right of way, the ability to walk along yeah, the, that type of thing? Right. Yeah. Right. So I think we need to do some more research. I think it's a great idea. We should have a work session and with the yeah. LMC. I think Dick Grinnell suggested that also, but yeah. let's get some research under our belts and find out what we're looking at <clears throat> before we just go off and have a meeting and, and throw stuff out there. I think that's a great idea because there, there have been a lot of questions you know, raised about certain properties and why this happened and why this yeah. was allowed and that kind of thing. So if the LMC and the CONCOM get together in one meeting, I think That'd be very valuable helping answer questions. Right. What do you think, Norm? Looking forward to that meeting. Okay. So we'll see everybody at the town meeting tomorrow. Absolutely. When is that? Tomorrow night. Tomorrow it's <laughs> six o'clock at the outside at the high school. Big party. Oh, oh yeah. No, I won't be there. I'll be here. I was hoping maybe I could zoom in uh, or something. <laughs> you can watch it on Zoom. They're gonna, they're gonna, you can't participate, but you can watch it on Zoom. I might be able to do that. <laughs> That'd be good. At least 15 minutes or so. Yeah. You can call in your questions if you want. No, Dennis, no. Dennis will ask them for you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. Oh, there was one other thing, Chris. Is that on one other thing that was not on the agenda. I think I said it to every sent it to everybody though. The Rad Willowitz parcel, fifty something acres on the other side of the rail trail, two million two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. It's up for grabs for anybody that uh, wants to exercise their right of first refusal. We're in. Let's get it. Pocket change. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a safe bet to say that uh, a landlocked piece of land for that kind of money is not going to be uh, in our budget. No. Two million. Oh, you want to just take a quick vote on no interest on that? Okay. Mehmet, what do you say? Yay or nay? No interest. Jerry? Same. No interest. David? No interest. And Brian? Brian's gone. Okay, Chris says no as well. All right, sell it. Sold. <sighs> it's a nice piece of farmland. Yes. Or a future Walmart. Right. There you go. So, that's a, are we that's still in new business? That's where Carvana is going to be going over there. Carvana. <laughs> yeah. That's a, Future home of Carvana. Oh, really? Yeah, they're buying it. They got the purchase and sale. It's a, that and the Griffin property that abuts it, the one that we went to look at for the delineation. Those two parcels are going to be Carvana. Wow. Mm hmm. As far That's as I they know. would drive for them someday. The planning board okay. knows about this, I'm sure. Uh, do they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They've got the plans on the table. Oh, yeah. Wow. Carvana, okay. huh? so, yeah. That's interesting. 
Big parking lot. Hey, just, I know we talked about continuing with Zoom or meeting in person at the town hall. Now, things have changed with the CDC. What is the consensus on going back to having in-person meetings? I know it's a giant pain for Jane to coordinate all of us to run around getting documents signed. And Dave, if I could, uh, if I could comment, I talked to Doug Moglin today. Yeah. He said Governor Baker's uh, proclamation is going to run out in the middle of June, which means we'll have to go back to meeting in person unless the town adopts the, uh, the new policy, which Doug thought that was a great idea. Apparently he doesn't have consensus because it's not on the agenda item for the town meeting. So they're gonna to have to have a special meeting, town meeting to adopt that if they decide to. Otherwise it looks like we're gonna to have to go back to- Back in the middle of June. So that could be our next meeting or the meeting after that. Unless, meeting. unless Governor Baker decides to extend it, which I would hope that he would, but- Would it be just, know. would it be just members yeah. and in person and then Zoom for guests? Is that the intention? Yeah. And we're not going to, I don't think we even have that capability at this time. We're working on it, but that would be more complicated, wouldn't it? Pretty no, it's difficult yeah. to do that. Yeah. I would say if the proclamation gets torn down, it's open meeting with committee and guests. Okay. Yeah. Which right. I'm fine with. Hey, that way you get candy. Yay. Well, it's all about the candy and making sure that she gets the documents. It depends, how, it depends how good you all are. <laughs> They're very good. Okay. <laughs> all right. I make a motion to close the meeting and go watch hockey. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Okay. Bye, have a uh, good night, everybody. Have a good